the background to the story is the, the Whirlwind computer. The Whirlwind computer was one of the earliest real-time electronic digital computers. I was exploring our collections and I came across a photograph of, of Whirlwind um, from the early 1950s. And there were two people. There was a person standing and then there was um, an African-American man, young man, running one of the first electronic digital computers at MIT or anywhere for that matter. So I dug through more of our museum holdings. I found a cropped photograph of the same original one that I had seen where he was identified as Joe Thompson. He had moved from MIT to Southern California where he had had a career in software and companies in Southern California. Looking for just a Joe Thompson in Southern California didn't seem really very tractable. It's kind of a needle in a haystack. I did a few online searches. There's a lot of Joe Thompsons in Southern California. And I knew that there had been reunions of people who had worked on Whirlwind. So I thought, well, Joe went to the reunion. So I got in touch with Debbie Douglas at MIT, and she was kind enough to go through their files and give me an address that had been good, at least some years before. And I did something that I've done in the past, just to, you know, write a nice letter, send it in the normal, traditional, old-fashioned mail um, with a handwritten address on the envelope. I put it in the mail and sort of uh, thought, well, if Maybe I'll hear, maybe I won't. Two or three weeks later, I think it was, my cell phone rang, it answered it, and uh, the voice on the line said, hi, this is Joe Thompson. We set up a time for um, myself and a member of our media team here at the museum to go to Southern California to his home and to record the interview, and uh, we did, and it was a great experience. They, uh, at MIT, were looking for uh, bright young kids who are not going to college. And so they interviewed kids from the, all, the, all the surrounding uh, high schools. And then I got picked as the first one. They had no, what you call it, an operators. Uh, it was just the, the students, uh, the grad students who were coming in running for their stuff. So I was the first to as a, as a, as, you know, see if it would work in it. I guess it worked well, so I think then they hired more. And I just got used to the, to the, the lights and the sound and using, you know, learning how to read in the paper tape and then learning how to, un, to understand what was on the paper tape, to reading it. And then, you know, because if I thought, where the holes are punched, you got, what is this? And you got to have to, so you had to learn the whole system. And you get to the point where you understand what they're doing, and you, and you, and you understand the, the sound, because the sounds are different for the different operations. And if something doesn't sound right, you realize something's wrong with the computer or something else, and you can actually stop things, and you can actually even look at your tapes and see if, if there's a problem with the tape or the cards or something. So it's a learning process you went through when I, when I joined RAN, the condition was that within two years, I would be transferred to California. So it sent me to California to start work there. I was programming at RAN, uh, and then when I was transferred to California, I did not do operating. I was strictly programmer. I started out and working, and I became a, what's called a unit head. I probably had like, I don't know, five or six people working for me. And then, then I became a section head, and had more people. And then I became a group head with more people. And I became a branch head with more kid, more people. You know, I had you know, probably 20, 30 people working for me. There's a, a young man from Texas, and he was using, um, to me, rock, derogatory terms for black people. African Americans. Okay, so one day he was in his office. We had a lot of single offices. One day 
it was in the office. I went in, closed the door, and talked to her about getting this act together. And we became the best of friends. I think that's why I got promoted. I was able to handle and work with people well and address well, interface with no major problems and get the job done.